caught my wife, 29 female, cheating on me, 29 male, again after a year. Why do I question my own sanity? Hello and good day to everyone. This is my first post on this site, and I simply wanted to share my thoughts, gain some inspiration, and rant because I don't have another channel available to me right now that allows me to do so. So I sincerely thank everyone who takes the time to read and express their honest opinions from an unbiased perspective. Background. My name is 29 male, my wife's name is 29 female, and we have two beautiful children under the age of four between us. Keep in mind that my wife is suffering from depression. At one point, I was admitted to the hospital and classified as suicidal. She is taking medication, or should be taking medication, as directed. Story. In December 2020, I realized that my wife had been having an extramarital affair. After a month had passed, in January 2022, my two-year-old daughter gave me my wife's mobile phone, which had been left out in the living room. I had no idea what had happened until then. Because of an incoming text message, the lights were turned on in the room. When I picked up the phone, the text message, I love you, was the first thing I noticed. As soon as I recognized the name, my stomach dropped, it was a close friend of hers. The information comes not just from that message, but also from prior conversations. Rage, amazement, disappointment, and doom were all emotions I experienced. What I was experiencing was a nightmare, and I couldn't believe I was in the midst of it. When I saw my wife with her phone in hand, I asked her a question. I'm not sure what this is. So, what precisely is going on in this situation? I'm not exaggerating when I say that the first thing she says to me is, why are you even looking at my phone? As a consequence of this, I felt even more irritated. It was impossible for me to accept what she had said. She couldn't show any sorrow until much later in our conversation, which was unusual. But now that I think about it, I'm not so sure. Her apologies was not sincere, as shown by the fact that I had to coerce it out of her mouth. Even yet, it's not the way I would act if I were in her circumstances, and I hope she understands that. In any case, she tells me her side of the story and admits that she had contact with this individual on a number of different occasions. She went on to say that she was really depressed and unhappy at home, and that I was not giving her with what she needed, nor was I genuinely listening to her for a period of time. In general, she claimed to be the victim, blaming me for her actions, and claiming that I was to blame. Of course, knowing what I know now, I had no clue how to react, so I just shrugged my shoulders and took the blame. I was quite resentful of myself for her cheating. Disaster and heartache are inadequate words to convey how I felt at the time, nor can they adequately explain how I feel even now. Just thinking about it. I would never want this kind of behavior on anybody else. It took approximately a month for me to decide to continue our relationship and pursue reconciliation, and the only way it could work was that she stopped the affair and blocked this individual from all social media platforms, messaging apps, and other such services. This wrecker of our home and our family must be removed from our abode and our family. Me, who was there when she called and blacklisted him from all social media networks, was witness to her deeds. After a year has gone, and despite the fact that there have been some bumps in the road, I have the sensation that things are beginning to improve. Couples therapy sessions were held once a week for around six to seven months with the couples therapist. We concluded the classes with the impression that we no longer need them, and we immediately began putting what we had learned into practice. It is presently Saturday morning in the month of February 2022, and the date is February 2022. In order to provide our cat with some food, I got out of bed around 5.30 a.m. when I returned to our bedroom. I saw that her phone was still on the nightstand next to her. I immediately called her. Because it was AP account, I wanted nothing more than to put the phone down and go back to sleep, until I saw it was my own account. When I first saw what I was experiencing, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. When I first woke up in the morning, I thought this was nothing more than a nightmare come to reality. I didn't read all of the texts since there were more than enough for me to go through. Suddenly, everything that I had believed had finished a year earlier flashed before my eyes like a burst of lightning. Although I was enraged this time, I managed to keep my cool, unlike the other two occasions when my temper flared. After I roused her, I said her, what is the name of this individual? As a result, what really is happening in this? Circumstance is unclear. She didn't say anything for another five to ten minutes after that, according to my estimation. The room was deafeningly silent. 
She then goes on to describe it in more detail a second time after that. Not only was she not happy, but she was also depressed, and she couldn't seem to shake the emotions she had for this specific guy. Just to make sure I was still alive, he reached out to me to see if everything was well with my family. As a result of my inability to trust her, she said things I couldn't believe. When I was given a second opportunity, the sliver of faith I had left in her was spat back in my face by the universe. She didn't show any remorse for what she had done immediately away. As part of her attempt to portray herself as the victim, she justified her actions by claiming that it was my fault since we had decided that we didn't need to continue couples counseling after 6-7 months. When I returned, I said that I had spent 30 minutes in the fresh air at the moment, I'm looking at getting a divorce. It is impossible for me to torture myself endlessly despite the fact that I still adore you. As a result of that experience, I've been experiencing self-doubts. In my whole life, there has never been a time when my self-esteem has been worse than it is right now. For the simple reason that I was reared in this manner, I consider marriage to be essential. As a consequence, we're now in the process of retaining an attorney to aid us in preparing for the impending separation. I'm still taking it all in, reaching out to my pals for support and so on. However, in the case of our divorce, I would like to inform her family of the grounds for our separation, rather than her attempting to conceal the facts, but what are your thoughts on this? Is it wise for me to go ahead and do it? I feel obligated to ensure that they do not fall for any deception she may spread in order to further her own objectives by spreading incorrect information. 1. Why do cheaters strive to portray themselves as victims when they are caught cheating, and how do they do this? It's not clear what it is about cheaters that causes them to cast the accusation onto their betrayed partners. When I wasn't the one who cheated, why do I have concerns about my own sanity? 3. Why do I have questions about my own sanity? Please accept my heartfelt thanks on behalf of everyone who has taken the time to read and comment on this post. Whatever happens to them, I hope that everyone who has moved on is in a better mental condition and that they are with someone who really loves and respects them, regardless of what happens to them next. Update. I'm sorry I did this to you, rather than I'm sorry I had this affair with you, is the preferred expression, sorry for what I've done to you. I cheated because I wasn't happy in the relationship. An obvious conclusion should have been reached a year ago. Because I cheated, it is all your responsibility. If you had treated me correctly, we wouldn't be here now. All of my wife's comments are taken directly from her conversation with me. Since my STBXW cheated on me, I've been depressed, disgusted, betrayed, devastated, outraged, perplexed, and I've been viewing myself in a whole different way when I look in the mirror. There is no sense of remorse, empathy, or concern. You would be amazed at how easily cheaters can convince and surround themselves with friends who just helped to fuel their cancerous habit by telling her that cheating was the only choice for getting out of a relationship she was unhappy with. I mean, what's the point of being an adult and simply having a talk about it? Even though I know that healing will take a long time for me, I'm having so many emotions at the moment that I'm suffering tremendous anxiety. My excitement for the divorce's completion is tempered by the sorrow of seeing the person you thought you knew finally decide to unveil their true colors bot. Blaming you for everything horrible that has occurred in their life, and only their lives, over the course of a few months.